would over explain things that don't require an explanation. What does this remind you of? Oh, God. A Jay Williger. I wonder who. Hey, Emily, how are you doing today? So Y'all want to watch this in, uh, interrogation really quick? <laughs> The detectives created a ruse, inviting yeah. Stephanie to come in and advise them on a case involving stolen art. Knowing they were dealing with one of their own, they rehearsed and prepared for the interview more than anything they had done before. Their plan of attack was to keep the conversation as casual as possible for as long as possible, and carefully waited for the key moments to initiate the confrontation. Stephanie, I don't know if you know my partner. Hey, hey. great. Hi. Sir, nice yeah, to meet you. guys. How's it going? Good. Here's another round. Uh, well, have a seat. Hi. I don't want to talk about this in the squad room because okay. I, I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side, everybody's yeah. always wondering what everybody oh, else yeah, is sure, doing. No okay. The first thing the detectives do is set up a compatible tone with a suspect. She has just stepped foot inside an interrogation room, and the detectives negate the negative implications of such an environment through a friendly disposition. Consultative meetings, such as seeking advice over an art theft, can take place anywhere, and the last place detectives would choose to spend more time in would be an interrogation room. The reason they give the suspect for meeting in such an unusual location is to not spread rumors or innuendo, yet the real reason is that all firearms have to be checked in before entering the area, and they needed the suspect to give up her gun without alerting suspicion. But, uh, like we're talking about being busy and stuff, we've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case, and we're doing the case. There's some notes uh, to see uh, as far as your name being mentioned. Do oh, you, okay. Do you oh, man, I wish we could see her facial reaction. Oh, dude, she's probably like... <laughs> you know John Rutten? Try and imagine for one moment that you savagely murdered a love rival in a jealous rage. Over two decades had passed since the act, then all of a sudden you're brought to an interrogation room and sat directly opposite two senior investigators who bring up the name of the man you committed first degree homicide for. Oh man, I wish we'd see our face. John Rutten? Rutten. The investigators already knew how to say John Rutten's name correctly. The mispronunciation was a simple strategy to see how the suspect would react. Damn, man, I want, I want to be a f***ing interrogator. Shit, <laughs> shit looks so fun. Setting aside the element of the murder, John Rutten was the second longest relationship in Stephanie's life, and a psychiatrist later stated that this pause was four times as long as it should have been. She was already being deceptive by acting as if she hadn't thought about that name for so long, giving reason for her prolonged reflection when in reality, the name John Rutten was engraved in her memory, and even when slightly mispronounced, it would have most likely taken milliseconds for her to realize exactly who the detectives were referring to. Right. Oh yeah, I went to school with him. You did? Yeah. God, man, I wish we could see your facial reaction! How long did you know him? Gosh, I went to school in, um, let's see, went to UCLA 19... Look at the way she talks to you, she's like, oh, gee golly, oh gosh, gee willikers. Oh man, boy, oh boy, just like listen to her talk. 78 I started and, um, you know, met him at school at the dorms. Mm -hmm. um, she says she met him in the dorms, yet left out the fact that they had dated for four years and went on numerous holidays together. Even though she wasn't asked directly, a truthful subject would most often volunteer this information without having to be pressed <gasps> for it. Were you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I mean, yeah. I mean, what's this all about? Well, it's regarding, it's a case we're working on and it involves John. She's getting nervous. In there, some of the statements we, we reviewed, uh, you know, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we good friends. Um, lived in the dorms for, I lived in the dorms for two years. Um, you guys lived in the same dorm? It's so funny because I think she, Stephanie Lazarus said that she barely knew the guy and then now she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, I lived in the dorm uh, two years, you know? <laughs> just just see how her like story changes, okay? Slowly changes as she realizes that, fuck, these detectives, they actually have a lot of information. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, Dijkstra. Okay, were you guys just friends or anything else or? Yeah, we were, we were good friends. Good yeah. friends. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated. Uh, uh -huh. You know, um, I mean, is it, what's this all about? Well, it's relating. <laughs> She's so nervous. <laughs> She's so nervous. Yeah, this is JCS. Oh, dude, this is my favorite JCS video. This interrogation of Stephanie Lazarus, because like this is just gold right here. To uh, his wife. 
It's unfortunate that Stephanie's face wasn't captured at this moment because yes. she would have no doubt been immediately struck by the psychological reaction known as fight or flight. Her brain would have just triggered the influx of a specific cocktail of hormones in order to prepare her to either stay and deal with a threat or try and run away to safety. Stephanie mm -hmm. chooses to fight. Well, I mean, she can't f***ing run out of there, dude. It's going to be suspicious because she's talking to her co-workers right now. Okay. Okay. Did you know her? Not really. I mean, I knew that he got married years ago. Uh-huh. Did you ever meet her? God, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Do you know who she was, right? Gee, golly, gosh. I I, I don't know. I, I, man, golly, geez. <laughs> well, I... Let me think. Yes, we can see her face now. A long time ago. Um... um I, I may have met her. Um, jeez. The words, gosh, God, gee, are exclamatory remarks used to express surprise or strong emotion. You will see them used continuously throughout this interrogation, which is the suspect trying to insinuate a vague memory due to a lack of contemplation on the subject matter. <laughs> She's trying to emit the impression that she would have had no reason to give any further thought to John or anything related to John since they stopped seeing each other over two decades ago. You know, yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me... Lying as boo. Asking, you said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, what, are you guys, is this something? As we know, defensive. Stephanie is a cop and has been for 25 years. She will be wise to the fact that acting oblivious to the unusual development of the situation will be a glaring red flag in the eyes of the investigators. It's been shown time and again on this channel. Guilty suspects <laughs> will often try and act naive to avoid Whoa, confrontation as a means to avoiding it altogether, whereas truthful subjects will address the confrontation and either refute it or, if it's subtle, want immediate clarification and transparency as to what was being insinuated. I mean, you said that I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's, here's, look at her face. I mean, Stephanie, here's the situation. It's basically transparency as oh, to shit, what shit, was shit. being insinuated. Oh, Jay. Oh, shit. What was. Oh, shit. Jay is an L. Oh, Jay and L. What's K? Oh, shit. K is play? Before we learned things on the fucking YouTube on the keyboard. What the hell? When we saw this in the. In I'm going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's. here's <laughs> I mean, Stephanie, here's the situation. It's basically, we, everything. you know, we knew that this, uh, when we saw this in the, in, in this chrono, that maybe, you know, there was some relationship there. That's what the chrono indicates. The detective now subtly avoids the question altogether, but instead offers a deceptively reassuring response to the suspect. He makes a very sharp switch from the investigative subject matter to the previous topic of workplace rumors. He brings her focus back to the false perception of them being on her side. Stephanie had just asked what was going on, and now he essentially essentially replies with, we are your friends, we're doing you a favor. And we didn't want okay. to come up to you at your desk and ask those kinds of questions or do anything. You know how up there people can see what's going on if you go into an interview room and people are in there getting oh, supplies. Okay. So we, we wanted to afford you some privacy, some confidentiality okay. to talk about this because we thought it might be, you know, something, you know, you're married to someone else, obviously, and so forth, and that you may not want to, you know, talk about Damn, she's married to someone else. She got kids and everything. About these things in that setting where someone, you know, we don't want the rumor mill. Or Dude, imagine being with someone, then you realize that your partner murdered someone like 20 fucking years ago. Your fucking mom murdered someone 20 years ago. Holy shit. Bernie, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's fine. I mean, so we're, we're, we did this just as, as a means to try and speak to you in okay, just a confidential I mean, just... place where you, you know, where where your business isn't out there for other people in, in well, you know, I mean, your division. Yeah, and all I mean... about. Whether it be shock or the total reluctance to accept the situation at hand, Stephanie warily accepts the reassuring response without further inquiry into her initial challenge. She instead falls back into her agenda of having a foggy memory with regard to the incriminating contents. You know, God, that's been a million years ago. I mean, you know, um, what year is it now? 2009? I mean, I graduated in 82. 82, yeah. Um, Can you put in the Discord, dated, nobody? Um, I dated other guys. I'm sure he dated other girls. Um, well, let me ask you, <laughs> roughly, how long would you, <clears throat> would you say you guys dated? Oh, jeez. Oh, um, <sighs> oh, jeez, Willikers! <laughs> I couldn't even say. I mean... Notice how she now goes on to over-explain things that don't require an explanation. Who used to do that? Who would over-explain things that don't require an explanation? What does this remind you of? Oh, God. A Jay Willikers. I wonder who. Hey, Emily, how are you doing today? Oh, gosh. <laughs> My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> 
I got a command for that, so y'all don't have to type that whole thing out, okay? Here you go. There you go. <laughs> and weren't even inquired about. It's mm -hmm. a clear-cut indication of hyperarousal and a derivative of TMT, also known as terror management theory. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Suspect will go off on unrelated tangents as means for gaining momentary relief. Going into detail about trivial things affords her a brief escape from the terrifying reality eventuating before her. The what a great way to describe that! I, like, never knew how to describe that when someone just goes off on a tangent, but they're just trying to get momentarily relief. What a great way to describe that. I wish I was good with words like this, man. This is a very common occurrence in interrogations where the suspect is facing serious charges and psychiatrists believe it to be a subconscious coping mechanism. I started school there in 78. Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1970. <laughs> Bitch, the question was, how long did you date John for? But you know what? They want her to keep talking. The more information she gives, the better. The better. We can all use this against her later on. <laughs> This answers so many questions about some of my coworkers. Now we all gonna be diagnosing our friends and our coworkers and shit. Okay, so this is the question. How long did you date John for? Coping mechanism. I started school there in 78. Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1978. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 82. Um, I don't even remember what year he graduated. If it was a year or two before me. Okay. Um, I think mm -hmm. he was a little bit older than I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can't remember if he was born Let's say I'm born in 60. Can you just imagine like Camille Vasquez right now? Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Ms. Lazarus, that's not the question I'm asking. How long did you date John for? Answer the question. I didn't ask anything else. 1960, I don't know if he was born in 58 or 59. I mean, I, you know. Objection foundation. <laughs> um, I mean, I knew his parents, I knew his sister. His brother went to Northridge. She forgot the um, original question was. Um, you know, his sister spent the night at my house before. Obviously, I spent the night at his house before. He probably spent the night at my house before. Um, you know. Did your dog step on a bee, though? The bee step on the dog? Did the bee and the dog step on you? No, I, I yeah. you know, I don't. I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, because from what you're telling me, is you, you guys dated while you were in college together, right? Yeah, and probably after college. Um, I'm, I, I can't. <laughs> geez. Um, she called me with a curse. My husband. I met my husband. In, I mean, Wait, did she even answer the fucking question yet? I don't think she did, right? Scott, um, let's see. <laughs> I was teaching Dare, because I met Scott when I was teaching Dare up in Oregon. But we had long stopped, you know, dating before that. So you um, haven't talked to him for a long time? Oh, I, I think I Hi, June Star. a long time. You're pretty. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I talked to him. Um, I met Scott, I'm thinking, in... 92 maybe um april of 92 it was scott being your husband <laughs> i don't think she answered the question yet what the heck oh my goodness okay the original question was how long did you two date for and now she's giving like her whole background story the recipe to her grandmother's omelet come on now yeah, i'm trying to think <laughs> i was teaching dare let's see what year is this, is this we'll be married i got married in 1996 i think i met scott in 92 Prior to that, I couldn't tell you how long I had talked, you know, talked to John prior to that. But were you wearing Amica cream? But since um, you since you met your husband, Scott, you hadn't talked to him? I mean, he hey. may have called me uh, once or twice uh -huh. before we got married. Right. Um, you know, oh, geez, I, I, lived, I moved to see me in 1994 because I lost my house in the earthquake. Oh, really? Um, Pity. Uh, quite honestly, I probably keep in contact Hi. with June Star. a few people from the dorms. We we all we all lived on the tenth floor. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Tenth floor. And, um, so Stephanie Lazarus, it seems like you have a really good effing memory. You're giving us all these details. Yet when asked about a direct question about something that the detectives want to know, she's like, "Oh my yeah, gosh, that was such a long time." <laughs> I don't know if I can remember that. Meanwhile, it goes into details about everything else in our life. There's... <laughs> oh, remind me to open Pokemon cards. I got more Pokemon card packs. Yay! I use my GameStop um, uh, monthly credit thing to buy Pokemon cards. Mm, 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 mm. About three or four people I keep in contact with. There's probably like six or eight of us that were all really close. Mm -hmm. And who are those um, people? Oh, jeez. Um... Diana Basta, um, the people I still keep, I, I haven't been in contact with her in a long time. 
Um, I mean, wh wh what's, uh, what's, I mean, what's this all about? I mean, well, let me ask you. That. The suspect challenges the detectives for the second time, and once again the question is avoided, but this time in a more confrontational manner, as the topic is maintained with no reassurance afforded. The detectives are ramping up the pressure in a very subtle, yet highly effective manner. What is it the relationship between you and John? You know, I don't... It was kind of a weird relationship, I mean... We really? A weird relationship? Tell me more! Was it because you murdered his fucking wife? We, we, we dated... Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would consider me his girlfriend. Um, we just, we dated, we did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was like, I went out with other guys, um, saw other guys. I went on lots of vacations, um, you know. And, and once you guys split were you guys still friends or kind of uh, you know problem? i mean she's trying to minimize it she's trying to minimize the relationship initially she was like she acted like she didn't really know him and then she's like oh yeah we were friends and then she said we were close friends i think and then i think later on she said that they slept over at each other's houses his sister slept over her house she slept over her mom's house she slept over her dad's house the grandma house and now when they're talking about dating she's like trying to like minimize it again so this is on jcs psychology uh they're they're very big on youtube so you guys should check out the rest of their videos or we can just watch them together too because um jennifer pan one was a really good video as well i fucking hate friendly not friendly no i don't think it was not friendly i mean we were friendly um uh i know that we went to hawaii um, at one point. Wait, y'all went to Hawaii? Y'all slept over each other's houses? Y'all were dating for two years, but you weren't boyfriend, girlfriend? Mm, sure. If you're just trying to minimize the relationship. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. And you were saying that, um. The, it's 2009 now. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything or? Um. Oh, God. Gee, golly. Um, Gee, golly, they lookers. Or what she did for a living or where she worked or anything uh -huh. about her? The suspect was just asked three consecutive questions relating to the victim. She was supposedly in a reflective state during all three of the questions, yet her facial expression completely changed for the third one. This is because she was pretending to be in a state of reflection for the first two questions as she already knew the answers, whereas for the third question, she actually was in a state of reflection and was genuinely searching her memory for the correct response. Play that back. Play that back. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything or? Um, um. The third question is about to be posed and her focus is about to switch from pretending to be thinking to actually thinking. Or what she did for a living or where she worked or anything um. about her? <laughs> well, I think she, I th I'm going to say that I think she was a nurse. Um, man, I can't even remember how he, he said he met her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Well, let me ask you, did you go to their wedding, you know? No, I didn't go to their wedding. Um, yeah, wait, actually, I don't know if they were, were they even able to have a wedding? I don't know if she murdered her before or after, maybe it was afterwards. Um, no, I don't, did not go to their wedding. Um, I couldn't even tell you what year he got married. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Damn, this stupid beach is giving so much information. And you're a senior detective, Stephanie. <laughs> Shame. You no, know, it's, it's been a million years ago. You know, again, I, I mean, what, you know, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Well, do you I, I mean, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't understand why you guys are asking me this. This is like the fourth time she said this. <laughs> you know why, Stephanie. You know why. You know what you did. You know, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Yeah, F Chris Watts. I hate Chris Watts, too. Hate Chris Watts. Have you guys read the love letters that were sent to Chris Watts? Listen, I'm telling you. Some of you guys may be surprised that Amber Heard has supporters. If Chris Watts, the man who murdered his wife, two kids, unborn baby... It's love letters. There will always be people out there that will like other trash people. That's just the way it is, you know? Just the way it is. Well, do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. <laughs> the way she said it. Yeah, I know she got killed. 
Yeah, it's because you did it. You wouldn't need to be an expert in body language to recognize the unmitigated terror emanating from the suspect's face at this moment. She had just verbalized the victim's tragic demise for the first time in most likely over two decades. What did, um, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I think Scratching I spoke your head. to another friend of his about it. Um, and how did, how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. I think at one point there may have been a flyer. If they're going to accuse of us being bots, we can accuse them of being bots. There was something. I know a good friend of his. Um, Were you on the job back then when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure I was on the job. That's why I would have heard about it with the flyer. Um, he had a good friend, Mike. Mike Boldrick. Mike. Mike Wazowski. Mm. Um. Um, but, you know, but being that you're kind of used to see uh, John, you know, was it everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her. Um. Eight separate witnesses testified that Stephanie had confronted Sherry at the hospital she worked at, while Damn. the two of them were reportedly in an intimate relationship with John. Damn. The confrontation was said to have been highly aggressive, and Stephanie had to be escorted off the premises by security. <laughs> Reports stated that Stephanie was by far the more combative, and even made threats against Sherry's life. But you know what, if we were to take the Amber approach, they're all lying. They're all coming out of the woodwork to get their minutes of fame. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's God, it's been so many years. I mean, <laughs> uncomfortable. I mean, I can't, even, I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have. I may have, I may have seen her at his apartment. You know, it, uh, geez, how many years ago is that? She's such trash. I hate her. That I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. Where was his apartment? Notice her passive disposition as she gives the following truthful response. On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, um, east or west of Des Man, you sure know a lot of details. She probably was like, Roscoe, oh, wait, uh, ah, east or uh, west, oh, 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 God, I don't remember. Okay, but you gave us so many other details. Ah, I, I don't remember. <laughs> so, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after, did, did he move? What a clown. She's such a clown, man. After he got married, or do you know, or... Now notice how her disposition switches from passive to frantic as she once again pretends to have a vague memory. <sighs> oh. <sighs> I'm sure he did. Did you know um, where he was living, or...? Somewhere in the valley? Did you ever visit him and his wife? No. No? Never no. went out to, you know, get-together, dinners, anything I of that nature? No, no. Like I said, his sister. How did she get away with so many years? Um, 20 years ago, probably no DNA evidence back then. A lot of cases were reopened, and then if there was like DNA, they'll like test it out. I think they found her DNA in uh, Sherry's apartment. Sherry's the victim. And she claimed that she's never met Sherry before. She claims that she doesn't really know her. But people have uh, come out and said that she was arguing with Sherry at Sherry's work at the hospital. And um, also, if you didn't know her, how the fuck is your DNA at her apartment, right? Hmm. used to come over. His sister had, had, had come to my place. I knew his, I knew his brother because his brother played basketball at Northridge. Who um, asked? I was just coming across some pictures. Man, I want to see the cross-examination for this. Ah. Because this is a lady who just goes on and on and on. I want to see the cross-examination. I want to see the prosecutor just go ham on her. Revenge for Sherry. Pictures that I just scan, uh, scanned from, um, I take a lot of photos, uh -huh. um, like 10,000. And I just. It was a brutal, really? Yeah, I've, I don't know what happened. Um, I know she murdered her, that's all I know. Did a service where I scanned everything. Maybe she's on Murderpedia. Let's see. And, uh, after his wife died, did, did you talk to him again or anything? Yeah, I mean, I did talk to him. Mm -hmm. I talked to him, probably his parents, um, probably some other friends, um, you know, I'm sure I talked to him. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't, you're not sure where he moved to after he got married? Oh, Sherry Rasmussen, poor Sherry. Damn, Van Nuys, hold on, that's like, it's like near LA. 
、uh, Wikipedia 天、oh, ，Sherry。February twenty four eighty six. Oh, this is before I was born. The body of Sherry Rasmussen was found in the apartment she shared with her husband John Rutten. Oh, they were already married in Van Nuys, California. She had been beaten and shot three times in the struggle. LAPD initially considered the case a botched burglary and were unable to identify a suspect. Wait, why did they think it was burglary? Were things stolen? Rasmussen's father believes that LAPD officer Stephanie Lazarus, who maintained a relationship with Rutten, was a prime suspect. Detectives who re-examined the cold case files in 2009 were eventually led to Lazarus. By then, herself a detective, a DNA sample from a cup she had thrown away was matched to one from a bite on Rasmussen's body. She bit her. Oh my god, this woman is fucking savage! Holy shit, who does that? I mean, who commits a murder? But Jesus Christ, to fucking bite the victim. Uh, a DNA sample from a cup was thrown away that was matched to a bite from the Rasmussen's body that had remained in the files. Lazarus convicted murder in 2012 is serving a 27 years to life of first degree murder in California Institute for Women in Corona. Lazarus appealed the conviction, claiming the age of the case and the evidence denied her due process. She also alleged that a search warrant was improperly granted. Her statements in an interview prior to her arrest were compelled, and that evidence supporting the original case theory should have been admitted to the trial. In 2015, the guilty verdict was upheld. Nice in the California Court of Appeal for the Second District. Some of the police files suggest that evidence could have implicated Lazarus early in the investigation was later removed, perhaps by other LAPD. Rasmussen's parents incessantly sued the department over this and other aspects of the investigation. Jennifer Francis, a criminalist who found the key evidence from the bite mark, unsuccessfully sued the city of Los Angeles, claiming she was pressured by police to favor certain suspects in this and other high-profile cases. And was retaliated against when she brought it to LAPD's、uh, attention. Criminal investigation. Okay, let's listen to the rest of the interview, and then if we're interested, we'll read the rest of it. No idea. I mean, never I, went over to to visit him or. I don't think. I mean, I don't or, think so. I mean, I'm cannibal. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. How are you doing today? How's it going? Thanks for popping on in. I appreciate you being here. Hello. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I did.、Um, I mean, I know he lived on Roscoe for a long, long time.、Um, mm-hmm. And then, look at her pretending. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then you know I, I got a problem with you know with that. Oh, oh, really? Okay. So defensive now. You know, if you're if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, "Hey, I'm a suspect." Well, I, now I got a problem with you know. Now you're accusing me of this. Is that what you're is that what you're saying? We're trying to figure out what happened. Stephanie.、Uh, well, I'm. I was. You know, I'm just saying. You know, do I need to get a lawyer if you're I, accusing me? Of I mean, this, you know. You don't have to. I mean, you know. I'm just. You're here of your own free will. I mean, no. You, you well, I, I know, but. I mean, <laughs> the detective. I mean, bitch, you you here? You know, you ain't leaving. <laughs> you're the one who's being a dumb dumb. You're not. You're not under arrest. You can walk out. You can leave you whenever you like. Well, but, you know, I, I'm trying to give you some background of you know how I knew him, and now you're telling me. That some somebody's saying that we had this big big old fight, and I don't even know what you're talking about,、um, you know. And I don't want to, you know, get in trouble for something that I didn't even do, or you're saying I did something. Wow, S- Stephanie, why why are you getting so defensive, Stephanie? <laughs> don't be so sensitive. Okay.、You、gotta gaslight her back. I mean, how would you guys like it if the tables were turned on you? I mean, we're not murderers, Stephanie. I, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't give a fuck. We're not murderers, you know. It wouldn't happen. Understand? No.、Um, No, that's what we're telling you. I mean, you're free to go whenever you want. If if this makes you uncomfortable and you want to, well, you want now to you're starting、leave. to make me uncomfortable. The thing is, I mean, we are making you uncomfortable. They could at that time on the crime scene. We are、okay? making you uncomfortable. The burglary thing you're talking about—that is an angle that they looked at. Angle, but now we're looking at everything else on the case because nobody was ever arrested、mm-hmm. on the case. I I don't know that or not. Okay. Now what we'd like to do is, obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that you know. <laughs> Look at her face. He said DNA. Boop. That's all they need to say. DNA, bitch. You fucking zombie bit her. This should literally <laughs> it bites you back in the ass. Oh man. <laughs> you know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. <laughs> Because now, 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 yeah, now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Okay. I mean, 
Look but at her. She's I think terrified. I know how this stuff works, okay? Don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And, and I wish I had been recording this because because now it sounds like... Oh, you, don't worry. We have it recorded. You don't need to record it. We got you. No, there's... You know, you're selling these people, say I'm fighting with her, and now it sounds like you're trying to, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, we know. Okay, and it, and now it almost sounds like you're trying to pin something on me. No, now I, I got that sense. Well, what it gets to on these on these cases, and you know it as well as I do, our job is to identify and eliminate suspects. I can't believe this. So if we have to <laughs> I can't believe I got caught, she said. <laughs> you go so we can identify or eliminate you. Would you be willing to do that? Maybe. Because I know this, I, I, I... I well, that's where we're at, too. I mean, because right now, from looking I at too. the evidence, it's, you know, it's possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just, that's absolutely crazy. And... It would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job, and, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So That's fair. I mean, because I, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, I, she said, I know how this stuff works. Yeah, she's been talking for an hour and seven minutes. Like a dumb dumb. I, I, I just can't <laughs> Bitch, you dumb. <laughs> we, we understand that. I mean, if we were in your position, I mean, we would feel the same way. You're a sad pup. Why is your dog sad? I mean, it's just. I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked that somebody would be blame saying that I did this. I mean, we had a fight, and so I went and killed her. I mean, come on. Well, that's... Okay. Oh, she couldn't finish her sentence. She couldn't even finish her Perfect. sentence. Well, thanks for giving me the courage. I wish I could record it. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Stephanie, take care. All right. Yo, she thought she was leaving. She thought she was leaving. Give it a sec, give it a sec. She thought she was leaving. They gotta bring her back in. Do you hear her yelling in the background? She's like, it's crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Is she mad she got caught 20 years later? You dumb idiot. What a dumb idiot. Okay. Stephanie, you know you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. Satisfying? You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any question. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, <laughs> one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to us right now? No. <laughs> it's okay, we already got one hour of footage of you talking because you had dumb dumb. Okay, this then. is crazy. This is absolutely... I'm like, I'm like in shock. I'm totally in shock. <laughs> she left it. Good afternoon. We are back on the record in People versus Lazarus. Shortly before noon, the uh, jury announced they have a verdict. We will take the verdict at this time. People of the state of California versus Stephanie Eileen Lazarus. Case number BA-357423. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Thanks, Lazarus, June. guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen in violation of penal code section 187A, a felony, as charged in count one. What a sick ass last name, Rasmussen. It's a pretty cool name. One of the information. We further find the murder was of the first degree. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Stephanie. Suck it. Oh, this is John Rutten's um, impact statement. Your Honor, I'm John Rutten. Aww. Thank you for the opportunity to speak during this hearing. Um, there are really no words that can describe the loss of Sherry and the whole of, the, of this experience, so it makes no sense to talk very long. It suffices to say that the Rasmussen family, my family, and Stephanie's family have been thrust into a bizarre world of disbelief and indescribable sadness. Sherry Rasmussen had a profound impact on so many people. Aww. And I was proud that she agreed to be my wife. It was impossible not to notice Sherry when she entered a room. 
To me, her physical presence was startling. I can clearly remember the first moment I laid eyes on her. Sherry Rasmussen was a physical presence and my heart still races when I look at pictures of her. But Aww. Sherry was extraordinary, more for who she was than the way she looked. She was a hard worker, a consummate professional, a leader, a diplomat, forgiving, tough, and a kid at heart. Cherry's loss, the way she died, and the trial 25 years after her death has had a profound impact on many, many others. The effects are broad and span a generation, creating pain for those whose lives should have never been touched by this tragic event. Again, words are feeble tools for describing these impacts. But there are so many moments and so very many tears. And the fact that Sherry's death occurred because she met and married me brings me to my knees. Aww. Stephanie Lazarus. Dude, what the fuck is this photo? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Yo, this shit just came out of nowhere. Oh my goodness. ...was sentenced to 27 years to life for the murder of Sherry Rasmussen. She's she is crazy. currently being held inside the maximum security unit of the Central California Women's Facility. Nice. Wait. Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. <laughs> Yo, we got a Dr. Spiegel up in here. What the heck was that? <laughs> she did like a Dr. Spiegel thing. Any other cars that stand out in your mind? Hmm. <laughs> what the fuck was that what the heck did i just watch oh my god oh yeah so anyways that's jcs uh, interrogation of stephanie lazarus one of my one of my favorite breakdowns while an undergraduate at university of california um los angeles john rudden a mechanical engineering major from san diego occasionally dated stephanie lazarus a fellow Dykstra, Dykstra Hall resident, and a political science major from Simi Valley, California. Both were avid athletes. Lazarus played on UCLA's junior varsity women's basketball team. Lazarus would steal Rutten's clothes when he showered and take photographs of him naked while he slept. Oh my God, I'm getting Jody Arias vibes right now. What the heck? Rutten never considered the relationship as anything more than necking and fooling around. They had sex for the first time after he graduated. He accepted a job with hard drive manufacturer, micro, 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 Micropolis, Micropolis. And she applied to the city's police academy and became a uniform officer in LAPD in 1983. In court, he later testified that they had sex 20 to 30 times between 81 and 84, but that she was never his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, man. Burn. Rutten later, later met Sherry Rasmussen a graduate of Loma Linda University who was on a fast track career in critical nurse, uh, critical care nursing. She entered a college at 16. Oh, that's cool. And by the late 20s, she was a director of nursing in Glendale Adventist Medical Center. What? That's so cool. Giving presentations and teaching classes for fellow nurses. At one point, Lazarus threw Rutten, Rutten a surprise birthday party on his 25th birthday, unaware he had been dating other women or that he'd developed a serious relationship with Rasmussen. She threw him a surprise birthday party and she didn't know. Oh my God. When she learned he was seriously involved with Rasmussen, Lazarus was despondent. I am truly in love with John and the past year has really torn me up. Lazarus wrote to Rutten's mother in August, 1985. I wish it didn't end the way it did. I don't think I'll ever understand his decision. In her own journal, she wrote, I don't really like the working. I found that John is getting married. Depressed Lazarus visit Rutten at his condo and the two had sex to give her closure. Rutten testified years later for what he says was the only time before Rasmussen's death. Later that night, Lazarus awoke a fellow officer she roomed with to commiserate. During their engagement, Lazarus bought her skis to the apartment that Rutten shared with Rasmussen and asked him to wax them. And despite Rasmussen's objections, he complied. Rasmussen felt that this was a little strange as Lazarus was dressed in flattering workout clothes. <laughs> she was trying to get him back. Oh my God, she was trying to get him back. Oh my God, so pathetic. After Lazarus left, his fiance asked if their relationship was truly over. Rutten convinced her the two were just friends. A few days later, Lazarus returned to pick up the wax skis in uniform and armed after he left for work. Rasmussen was unnerved by these visits and pleaded Rutten to tell Lazarus to stop coming by. Rutten said only there was nothing to their relationship and that she could ignore Lazarus. 
According to Nels Rasmussen, Sherry's father, Lazarus later visited Rasmussen at her office to tell her things that were not over between her and Rutten and told Rasmussen, if I can't have John, no one else will. Oh my God, another person who just treats people like property. Shortly before her death, Rasmussen again confided to her father her fear that Lazarus was stalking her on the street. Rutten and Rasmussen were married in November 1985. All right, criminal investigation. On the morning of February 24th, 1986, Rutten left the couple's condominium on Balboa Boulevard in Van Nuys to go to work. Rasmussen was scheduled to give a motivational speak at work that day. Managerial tactics, she did not feel she was effective. To avoid it, she told Rutten she might call in sick using a back injury she had occurred during aerobics the day before as an excuse. At 9.45, a neighbor noticed that Rutten's garage door was open with no car visible. Approximately 15 minutes later, Rutten made several unanswered calls home over the course of the day. Rasmussen's sister also called without answer. At noon, two men, who the neighbor believed were gardeners in the compound, gave her and her husband a purse they had found, which turned out to be Rasmussen's. A maid cleaned the nearby units and she heard something that sounded like two people fighting and then something falling around 12.30. When Rutten returned home in the evening, he found his garage door open, a broken glass on the driveway. In addition, he discovered the BMW he bought for Rasmussen as an engagement gift was missing. What the fuck? She, she took the fucking car? Where did she dump it? Because of Rasmussen's morning plans, he found it strange that she would later gone out without letting him know. The house answering machine has not been activated, despite both of them usually activating it when leaving the house unoccupied. Oh my God. You had to activate um, answering machines back then? <laughs> oh man, this is like 80s, 70s technology. Inside, Rutten found Rasmussen dead on the living room floor. Shot three times. There were signs of a struggle, such as a porcelain vase that had been apparently been broken over Rasmussen's head prior to the shooting. A bloody handprint next to the burglar's alarm's panic button. A toppled credenza. It appeared that someone at least had attempted to bind Rasmussen at some point. She had defensive wounds and a bruise in her face that appeared to be inflicted by a muzzle of a gun. The gun had been fired through a quilted blanket, apparently to muffle the sound. I don't think that even works. The investigating criminalist also observed a bite mark on Rasmussen's arm and took a swab from it. Holy shit. Why was she never investigated? What, what, what the, especially if there's a bite, what person is going to rob someone's house and be like, you know what? Let me just take a little chunkling out of the skin. Oh my gosh. Bro, guys, if you guys ever see um, cotton candy grapes at the grocery store, get it. It's so fucking good. I'm addicted. I fucking love it. it it's like, it's like, it's like grapes, but sweet and like, so yummy. 